Hey everyone, my name is Matt and I'm a technical advocate here at Stack Overflow. Today, I'm here to answer the question, how does Stack Overflow for Teams differ from the public Stack Overflow you already know and love? If you prefer the written answer, Rebecca from the product marketing team has created a fantastic little ebook you can check out. Otherwise, if you prefer video, let's get started. What is Stack Overflow? Stack Overflow is a knowledge sharing platform for software developers. If you don't know how to do something, chances are you're one of the 85% of developers worldwide who visit Stack Overflow every week. Developers and experts have been contributing, refining and curating knowledge on Stack Overflow for over 10 years. That's a lot of answers. Personally, I started using Stack Overflow at university and I still use it today, years into my software development career. That said, I also work here. So the main benefit to using Stack Overflow is the knowledge curated by the global community that helps individuals solve all sorts of technology related challenges way faster than they could by trying to figure it out by themselves. If things aren't compiling or you're facing an obscure bug or a common bug, chances are someone at Stack Overflow has previously encountered and solved this problem. You don't need to tap anyone on the shoulder, just continue on about your day feeling better that you've solved something yourself. That autonomy makes myself, and I presume others as well, feel very empowered and confident in their own abilities to get stuff done. So you may be wondering if Stack Overflow has all of this great public and free knowledge, why would you want your own private instance of Stack Overflow in the first place? Something like Teams, something that's not viewable by the public where you'll have to build up knowledge from scratch. Well, it all comes down to the fact that some knowledge shouldn't be shared externally. There's a reason why all of your wiki docs are protected, your keys are encrypted, and company secrets are under an NDA. There's some stuff that's relevant to your company and your company alone that should definitely stay under wraps. That being said, there's a balance to be had. You need to keep institutional knowledge secure, but you also need to make sure it's available to coworkers and the people who need it so they, they can get their jobs done and done well, hopefully. And that's really where Teams comes into the picture. Teams is a private instance of Stack Overflow for your own use. All the goodness that Stack Overflow provides, democratization of internal knowledge and incredibly searchable content, as well as integrations across popular products like Slack, Microsoft Teams, and Jira. As far as companies you know that use Teams, Microsoft, Intuit, Zendesk, and NASA are all currently using Teams, and by all accounts, loving it. So let's dive into what Teams is and why it's so handy. I'm sure many of you have joined an organization bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, only to be totally overwhelmed by the amount of tooling required to get up and running. Documentation is in several different places and you need access to four or more things you didn't even know existed five minutes ago. Above that, you're being onboarded remotely so there's nobody you can actually physically tap on the shoulder to ask for help. It sucks. And truth be told, can make you, and I definitely felt this before, feel a little incompetent. Most of us suffer from imposter syndrome at some stage and none of the above helps. What's worse is all the DMs you send to people and they're answering those really valuable questions you have when you first join. They never get to see the light of day. A lot of really good information is lost when it's not placed somewhere useful or even searchable that can be found again. That's why Teams is so useful. All of those questions can be asked, answered, and updated in a very accessible and user-friendly manner. That knowledge can be found again by other people. Two of the ways that Stack helps organize all of the questions your teams will have are tags and collections. These are two really important parts of organizing and structuring your data. Tags are words or phrases referring to the topic of the question, which links the question with other similar discussions. Standardized tags are available on the public site, but Teams especially allows your organization to create custom tags. Your team can also follow tags that interest them or that they have expertise in. For instance, somebody who's got a lot of domain knowledge on Project Neo that was built last year can stay in the loop as it's maintained or new features are added. They can contribute when they feel necessary. Secondly, you can group all content with related knowledge together using Teams' collection feature. Collections are designed to work alongside tags, and while tags tend to identify a broader topic, collections can span multiple topics. You can create a team onboarding collection with how-to documents, project guides, FAQs, and other information that helps a new team member get up to speed. Say for example, you're looking for an answer on how to set up your development environment. You've encountered an error because you've got a fancy new computer and you haven't set up your environment variables yet. The last time you did this was four years ago when you were handed your last fancy laptop at your last job. Instead of having to transition to the public site or Google to rejig your memory, you can search within Teams and stay there. 
Results are pulled from both the private and public platforms and are shown in a single interface. It is really, really useful. Speaking of useful, we all know the amount of tooling required to operate a business these days is immense. So the team at Stack has developed several integrations across Slack, Microsoft Teams, and Jira to help streamline your processes and keep context switching to a minimum. You can ask, answer, or search for Teams knowledge right from the tools you already work in. As a software developer myself, I'm at my most productive when I can rely on all of my communications and important things being in one place. I'm not having to constantly stress about checking five different sources for information to figure out what I should be prioritizing. The last thing that really sets teams apart is the community that is built around the product. And I'm not just talking about the public community either, but the one that grows internally as a result of the knowledge sharing and access to quality information. Say, for instance, you join a new company and it's remote and you've sent your onboarding buddy 101 questions in the first 48 hours. I've been there, you've been there. It's tough and it can be overwhelming for both parties. Instead, you hop on Teams, search your question and find it's already been answered by Lily over in the engineering team. Not only do you feel slightly more empowered that you can do your job, but you know that Lily now is the person to ask for anything related to that topic again. And you may even want to reach out and just say, thanks for helping me out. Uh, you can upvote the answer because you've found it useful and now others have a better chance of seeing this when they run into a similar issue. One of the things that I really value about Teams is that it provides a psychologically safe space for people to ask questions, find answers, and seek out domain experts independently and autonomously. It helps people feel more capable throughout the onboarding process and helps take the load off of domain experts in the company when there are several other people who can also contribute to a tricky question. The last point in particular is helped by the fact that you can specify those domain experts with tags and user groups. When a question gets asked in that group, they'll get a ping that someone needs a hand. User groups can also be customized to fit your organization's structure. For example, an engineering user group might be the entire engineering team or a small sub team that works on a specific product like front end devs or project Nebula. So that's Stack Overflow versus Stack Overflow for Teams. Stack is a public platform that you know and love and Teams brings across all of that goodness, makes it private and zhushes up a few of the features to make it work at an enterprise level. To quickly recap, here are a few main takeaways from the video. Stack Overflow has a global community where anyone can contribute. Teams helps you share knowledge privately with an internal knowledge sharing community. Everything contained within that space is more relevant to your company, your tech stack, and your environment. On the public platform, community members with high reputation are the only ones who can create a tag. On Teams, you designate that authority to trusted team members and domain experts within your organization. On Stack Overflow, all the knowledge is public. With Teams, your search digs through both the public platform as well as all the juicy little internal knowledge bits you've gathered over the years. And then that all happens in one place. Only Teams gives you the integrations to search, capture, and access knowledge without disrupting your flow or making you switch apps. Lastly, with Stack Overflow Public, everybody gets the same onboarding experience. Teams, on the other hand, while sharing that onboarding experience, also allows for an individualized onboarding adoption and further support. And that, my friends, is everything you need to know about the difference between Stack Overflow and Teams. Not Microsoft Teams, Stack Overflow for Teams. <laughs> If you've got any questions about Stack Overflow for Teams or Stack Overflow, leave us a comment down below and check out the link down in the description. We're waiting for you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.